And then finally, the life of money, the money maker. Well, ask yourself, what is money? Is it food? Can you eat it? Can you drink it? Can you live in it? No, money, all it does is gives you something to trade for goods and services. Right? So the life of the money maker, right? The Bill Gates lifestyle. Now, money cannot be an end in itself, can it? It's by its very nature, by its very definition, a means to an end. Right? So what Aristotle has shown us is that these three lives, pleasure, the public life, and the life of the money maker, cannot suffice as definitions for happiness. Now I want to be clear here, though, that Aristotle isn't saying that his definition of happiness is going to be devoid of pleasure. It's going to be one in which you're not going to have any friends. And it's one where you're going to be broke. If it were, then Aristotle's definition of happiness wouldn't be worth its salt. I would say, thank you very much, Aristotle, but I'm going to please myself, I'll have some friends, and I'll make some money instead. Right? So, all he's claiming here is that these three lives are not sufficient to provide a basis for a definition of happiness themselves. So, what Aristotle claims, sorry, Sheldon, right, is that what we've got to do is come at this problem from a completely different angle. Right? We need a new way to think of this. And he points out to us right, that all things that have what he calls a function we know the good for those things is to perform We know that the good for those things is to perform their function well. Right? So, right? for example, take my watch. Right? This is a good watch. Why? Because I know what its function is. It's supposed to give me an accurate idea of what time it is, and yeah, looks about accurate. Right? So, the function of my watch is to tell time. Provide me an accurate judge of what time it is. Right? A good watch is one that performs its function well, and when something performs its function well, we call it virtue. Right? So, in this argument that, that I call the function argument, of all things that have a function, the good for that thing is to perform its function well. That is, in accord with virtue. Right? So the virtue of this watch is that it tells time well. So, a good watch is one that performs its function well. That is, its virtue. Right? Now, when applied to human beings, this is kind of interesting. Right? I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm Canadian, and in Canada what you have to do if you want some beer is go to the beer store. Right. I went to the beer store not too long ago and I asked for a particular kind of beer. Right. I asked for Wellington SPA. It's a special pale ale. It's from a microbrewery here in Ontario. And it's a damn fine beer. Right. So, it's the beer store. The guy that works at the beer store, he has one function. Right. One thing to do get me the beer that I ask for. Well, he goes into the back right, and comes out with a strong beer, also by Wellington, but not what I ordered. Right? This particular beer yeah, tastes a little bit like gasoline to me. Right? Not what I'm looking for. So I said, no, that's the Iron Duke. What I'm looking for is the SPA. Right? 
So, you got me the wrong thing. So he goes back into the back and comes out with, guess what, the same six pack. All right. I try it again. Now you see how this is blue packaging. I'm looking for the one in the yellow package. Oh, sorry about that. He goes into the back and comes back out to the front. You guessed it, with the same six pack. This goes on a little while and I finally wind up walking out with the wrong bloody beer because I just get frustrated. Right. This guy has one function, bring me the beer I ask for. Right. A good beer store guy would perform his function well. That is, in accord with virtue. Right. So Aristotle's structure here allows us a few things. Well, first off, if we know the function of a thing, we can fairly easily define the good for that thing. Right? And attainment of the good for that sort of thing is going to have something to do with virtue. Right? But on top of that, what he gives us is sort of an evaluatory standard. Right? Somebody who does not perform their function well, we can call that a vice. Right? We can praise virtues and blame vices. I can say that this beer store guy was kind of a shitty beer store guy. Right? Now, we have to apply the same criteria to a definition of the human function because function gives us a definition of the good and therefore happiness. Right? So what Aristotle's claiming here is that the function of a human being is going to have something to do with happiness. So, right, the attainment of happiness is going to involve virtue. But we need to define the function of a human being first. Well, most importantly,